Hallelujah. Amen. I want to talk on unleashed. Unleashed. It's not unleashed, it's the past tense. Unleashed. Hallelujah. So, what does it mean when you say unleashed? Dictionaries have meanings for it, and I'm starting from there. But I realize that to really fully understand it, why don't we look for leash? Then leashed. Then we can now understand unleash and unleashed. Hallelujah. So dictionary meaning. Just looking at so many of them. Leash. The background meaning actually is a line for leading or restraining an animal. So to be leashed is to be controlled. Yep. Explain a little bit further. A leash is something that restrains. So, with that understanding, your own words for leash to be leashed, to be embondished, to be bound, to be limited. To be contained. That's leashed. You know what it means? Your strength, your skills, your wisdom can't help you. There's a greater force that controls you. So, with that understanding, what does it mean if you say unleash or to be unleashed? Just the opposite. So, because of time, let me just go. To be free. Freedom. Liberty. Unchain. Or to force out, to break out of a control. Unleashed. To shoot, to set in motion forcefully. In fact, one definition says to force a release that is not subject to any external control. You don't just break through the barrier, your sustainability and your continuous growth cannot be limited. Um, I was thinking of it and quickly just came to mind. The thief comes to know, John 10 10, but to do what? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. What does that tell you? To contain you, to restrain you, to chain you, to prevent you. That's all he does. And if you look at the wording and the setting of that statement from the lips of the master, he comes not. So don't take it for granted that he's coming naturally. Don't get necessarily excited that he's coming. He's coming with an aim and the aim is not for you. So even if he comes as an angel of light, he's to disturb your destiny. Why do you think he's coming for good? No, 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 no. He has no, he doesn't like you. So don't be too excited that he's smiling and he's coming towards you. It's to take something from you that he knows that he doesn't have the power to give you. He's a thief. He's a thief. And you see it all over. To quickly explain myself well as I go. Remember the story of Joseph? At every spot, the devil tried to contain him. Every spot. But the thing is this. Joseph was in a covenant. And Joseph knew it.
these restraining forces were evident, they were clear, except we want to live in denial. The plottings of the devil were very clear. But in the midst of it, you still see that there was a propelling force that could not be held back, coming from Joseph. You can pick all the stories of the Bible and all the characters. It's either walking as an unleashed or being leashed. No in between. You can say the same of Daniel, of Esther. Name the character. And I can say the same thing of you and of me. With this in mind, shall we just quickly read the scripture? Matthew chapter 17, quickly. Matthew 17. Now, after six days, Matthew 17 from verse 1, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves, quickly, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun. <laughs> and his clothes became as white as light. And behold, Moses, Elijah, and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make he had three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were greatly afraid. But Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise. And do not be afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus. Now, as they came down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them, saying, Tell the vision to no one until the Son of Man is risen from the dead. Why did he do that? Why did Jesus do that? What role did he play in his earthly ministry? Why do you think he did it? Remember, he was teaching them and will invariably hand over to them. So, why did he do it? Now, let me quickly remind you before then, they had seen him raise the dead. No, it didn't seem like this, but he raised the dead. They didn't see him like this, that is all light, but he fed 5,000 with the little boy's meal. They were yet to see him like this, he walked on water. They were yet to know him like this. Are you here with me? He spoke to the sea, well, he can't the sea. So much so that uh, they said, I'm going what manner of man is this? He looked every way like I am. But yet everything created submit. Everything created will submit to him. A number of times in the Bible, you hear that they marveled. And people marveled. His, at his what they marveled. At his deeds, they marveled. What, what, what kind of man is this? He said, three of you come with me. He took them up. He didn't say a word. As soon as they got up there, no, that wouldn't be the first time he would take them up. He would normally walk up the mountain or go up the mountain to rest, to pray, read your Bible. 
There must always be a time. Let me tell you this. Your labor can't save you. But laziness is not part of the kingdom style. But you don't need to walk yourself to death. It is God that gives increase. And when he gives it, it is God that sustains it. See, a lot of times we think after a while that it's by our power. Never by your power. He can flip you up in one day. And he can change the trend in one day. That's why we trust him so much. He will never afflict us with evil. And that's why we are ever grateful for who we are and where we are. We only have one way increase up. So, you normally know, we go away to go rest. Why did I digress? Please find time to rest, I beg you. You've never taken a break in 10 years. And I think that's why you're where you are. You're kidding yourself. But for the mercy of God that you're still alive, he who has called you is faithful to do it. Don't you ever compare yourself with any man in life. you be an ingrate. Appreciate what God is doing. That's the key to increase. And longevity. You will leave a good legacy. You will finish well. In the name of Jesus. So a number of times he will, he will withdraw. So it wasn't the first time. So remember even before he went to the cross, he took them to the garden of Gethsemane. So he turned around and he took them up. So it was prayer time. But before they could, they saw him dazzling. We've been seeing strange things of this man. We have never seen this. Then he does so much that all they saw was light that they could not comprehend with their physical system. While they were still wounding, a cloud came down from heaven and engulfed all of them. And through the cloud, they could see the same Jesus now speaking with Elijah. One person said that he did it to affirm his glory. Jack Hayford said, because a few verses before, he said, what do men say I am? Who do you say I am? I'm asking you today, the Jesus you serve, the Jesus you follow, who do you think he is? And Peter said, you are the Christ. But almost immediately, he started operating carnally. So he said he was affirming his power. Power, I agree, his power. Because suddenly they saw him like they've never seen him. Now they began to understand. No wonder everything obeyed this man. So this is who this man is in true sense. This is who he is from the inside. So Jesus was demonstrating to them that, look, you know who we are? We are the treasure within an earthen vessel. So we have what it takes to unleash. Where did he? No, yet. It hasn't happened to any man, only Jesus. So all the miracles you see, you see why? This is the real me. At least three of you can see. But please don't tell anybody that when I resurrect, let them know that it's no fluke. He 
He did it to affirm the fact that the, when they said to you, the kingdom of God is here, is there. He said, don't mind them. The kingdom of God is where? Within. He did it to affirm his sonship. Do you know that only on two occasions in the Bible, though recorded in many areas, many people, many early gospels, so to say, but only on two occasions, God said, this is my beloved son. And the two of them had to do with open heaven. And each time he said it, he, he directed the whole world to him. I wrote that to say, and I said this, I said he did it to defy his sonship. No, it would be an aberration for Jesus not to come to see. It would be a misnomer for Jesus not to open blind eyes. He didn't just did it anyhow, they were told that he did it everywhere he went. So what would you call what happened on the Mount of Transfiguration? He unleashed. Not that he was restrained, but he showed them beyond the confinement of the flesh who he was. Now you will agree with me that it's easier now to understand. I feel the fire now. It's easier now to understand purpose. Everybody was created for something. But let's limit it to Jesus now and limit it to what we are seeing. So, why did he come? Because up until now, the only human being like that. And I was thinking about it. I said, you know why? Because he was never leashed. He was born unleashed. In Psalm 51. You know what David said? He said, it, it was in sin that I was conceived. I was born in sin. So I was born leashed. But of Jesus, it is said, Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter five, in verse twenty one, he who knew no sin. He who knew no sin. And of course, the account of his birth in all the Gospels, immaculate conception, unlike Psalm 51, where we were conceived in sin. So he who knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So all men were born lit. Jesus was born totally Unleashed. But he looked very much like any man on earth. No wonder I said, This is who I am, guys. The so one manner of man is Jesus. Hallelujah. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. He makes the blind to see. Hallelujah. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. He 
comes the raging sea. Hallelujah. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. So, talking about his purpose. First John. Chapter 3, I think 8b. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. That's him. That's his character. That's his nature. So the day you are welcoming him as your chief guest, you should know we are welcoming to your home. For this purpose, the Son of God, that's purpose now, was manifested. What purpose? Shall we together? That what? Wow. So any surprise that demons cried out at his presence. Any surprise that everywhere he went he was doing good. The mighty healer he healed the Therefore, when the people saw him, they started rolling everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. My God. Everywhere. Because he came to destroy the works of the devil. And then that will lead me to the second reason he came, or the main reason actually, thereby setting men free, bringing souls into glory. Remember, the only one born unleashed. So I concluded, which is the truth, it takes the unleashed to unleash. If you see any, any unleashing from a leashed, it's temporary. It's way. He or she is wasting their time. I'm not joking. I'm, I'm not just speaking. I'm not trying to talk you good. This is the everlasting truth. It takes the unleashed to unleash. To manifest the qualities of God meant for his life here, he takes the unleashed. But how did he fulfill this assignment? How? Huh. Accidented it. How God anointed. Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing good. I feel it here. I don't know who you are. You are saying, what just happened? Because something just clicked in your spirit, man. It's a new beginning for you. You know, you're born again. I know, yeah, I know, I know you're born again. But every revelation for a child of God, for an unleashed soul, is a new beginning. Watch your life from today. I'm not joking. The things I used to fear, I fear them no more. The things I used to fear, I fear them no more. All the things I used to fear, I fear them no more. There is a great change since I'm born again. The things I used to do, I do them no more. The things I used to do, 
I do them. The things I used to distract me, the things I used to do, I do them no more. Oh, there's a great change since I'm born. Okay. Thank you, choir. You may be seated. How did he do it? How God anointed Jesus Christ of with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing good. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. And of course, if you look at Luke 4, 18, the Bible said, Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And then he stated his manifesto. Or declared his manifesto on earth. So the question is this, did he accomplish purpose? Destroying the works of the devil, bringing many sons to glory. The Bible says, as many as received them, to them he has given the power, the capacity, the ability to become sons. Isn't it amazing that when God referred to him as son, he was on the upper heaven, he was in Jordan, and of course, the transfiguration. And every time he says, it's like the last time I say, hear ye him. He's in charge. All things were made by him. And the good thing about Jesus is this. He is Lord forevermore. But he's invited you and I and brought us into himself. Say so he's brought me in. And he brought me into his banqueting hall, and his banner over me is love, is love, is love, Marabo, is love, and his banner over me is. And he brought me into his banqueting hall, and his banner over me is love. So did he achieve? Has he achieved? Yes. If that be the case, I want to do two things here. The first one is this. Did I say it takes the unleashed to unleash? Maybe I say the second one before I, before I get into what I want to do. It takes being unleashed to find your niche in life. Your niche in life will never be found until you're unleashed. That was why for all the times they were with him, they were just being marveled. They didn't get it. But by the time they resurrected, they began to have some understanding. Do you know that particularly that even on the day of resurrection, they still didn't believe. The Bible says so. Written. It took a while for them to believe. That's why they doubted the women when they came to tell them. The Bible said because they did not believe. But by the time he came back and taught them for 40 days and 40 nights and things began to happen. But even then, they were still afraid. Until the Holy Ghost came and uh, taught them what he had taught them or reminded them they got it well. I strongly believe, and God bears me witness, that every man can fulfill purpose. Every man can fulfill their assignment on earth. 
It's got nothing to do with your color. It's got nothing to do with where you were born. It's got nothing to do with the circumstances that brought you forth. Some, because my mother was raped. Big deal. You are a human being. You are here on earth today. It is your acceptance of Jesus that will make the difference. As many as received him, capacity to become sons. You become, you fall into the category that we say, This is my beloved son. Don't you think this morning is saying to me, This is my beloved son? I'm sure by now you don't have any doubt anymore. And what makes it interesting is that it's not, look, 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 it's not limited to any human being. As many as receive them to men, to them, he gave power. He's pointing at someone today. He said, that's my beloved son, whether you're a man or a woman, or you son generically in the kingdom. That's my beloved son. Now you can understand that now God is able to do anything on earth. Through you. You say, how? Because he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you can ever think or, you might, or ask according to the power The kingdom is within. We will pray from above. But how do we get there? We dive in. Away from the environment and circumstances around. But the spirit of God that resides in our spirit, man. Then we rule from above. That's how we unleash. We demonstrate the power of God on earth. Any wonder that most of where we missed it, I engineered through emotions. Every failure of a Christian is attitudinal. The Bible works on your emotion and so your attitude of the fruits of the Spirit. I know what it ever does. Come on, you're such a gorgeous person, you're such a pretty, pretty woman. It's for your assignment. God made you so for his glory. But that's what it ever capitalizes on. So you're so pretty. Every man is looking at you. What's your problem? So he takes the same thing that is meant for glory for something else. Then when we look at you, we say you are reckless. There are so many names you call as people go that way. But that's not you. What about the strength he has given you? You are a man of means, you are a woman of means. Great platform on earth. He gave it for his assignment and for his glory. You know what he ever comes to do? He said, can't you see who you are? Come on, Nebuchadnezzar. So what we see in terms of attitude, pride, which is his own nature. So every vice you see in a distraction is coming from the devil. But you are a good man. You are a good woman. You are well made. And you can manifest grace at will. Because why? You are unstoppable. The devil can't stop you until he gets your agreement. He can't. He doesn't have the power we give him. He can kill you until he has your agreement. 
He cannot hear me well. He can fail you until he has your agreement. He can make you become a failure until you agree with him. How do you know you agree with him? You begin to fear. Instead of believing God and walking in faith. Two things I want to do. I want to give you an opportunity to get unleashed this morning. That's number one. He was born unleashed. We were all born leashed up. But through him, today, we are unleashed if you are born again. If you are here today, you are not born again. This is your opportunity. Now you know no man can give you what I'm asking you to come and get. No man. I can give you. The best I can do is what I'm doing to point you to him who will give it to you. Will you accept him? Anybody here today? You are here today, you know that you know that you know that Jesus is not your Lord and Savior. Will you make up your mind and accept him today as your Lord and Savior? It's your personal decision. Nobody is forcing you. But I promise you, until you are unleashed, you cannot find your niche in life. So if you're here today, you say, I want to make him my Lord and Savior. Can you just stand up? Pastor, are you saying now that every born again believer has that same capacity like Jesus has? Yes, sir. Exactly what I'm saying. How come we are not manifesting it? Knowledge. Consciousness. That's all. Somebody's about to begin to surprise themselves. I'm speaking from his heart. Your life will be different. In the name of Jesus. From the general lives in your generation. I'm not joking. You are marked. In the name of Jesus. You will do well. You will do exploits. In the name of Jesus. Your lives will glorify God. Yeah. You will shine as light in the darkness of this world. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Listen to me. Listen well. You know what God wanted to do with Joseph that he knew from his home? You know all he went through? Envy. That didn't cause him to become resentful and bitter. The devil wanted him to become like that. He didn't. Betrayer. That didn't, that, didn't, that didn't derail him. What about Potiphar's wife? He saw a man. Went for him. Said, no. There's nothing the devil will offer you that will suddenly become more important than your destiny. In the name of Jesus, others will be jumping and be showing off. It's a matter of time. You are coming to rule them. I'm not joking. Joseph, even all his brothers, his father, and even Potiphar and his wife ended bowing to him. What if he had gone along with them? I'm talking to somebody here. Your future is too important to God. I use two in a way that you will appreciate it. Than anything that this earth can offer. God loves you. We, your parents, love you. I love you. Never mind where you are today. You are coming out. In the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter the number of people swimming in the, in the seas or fields of this world. You are different. In the name of Jesus. For many of you, you will, end, you will step into a place. The atmosphere will change. Yeah. It just reminded me, I said to tell you. I said from today, you begin to carry something called God's honor. Yeah. You will command human respect. The devil will do everything to take it. Don't mind him. 
Some are saying, but I've gone astray. He's the God that restores. From today is the new beginning for you. In the name of Jesus. So you go forth and unleash in the name of Jesus.